Hey guys, welcome to Programming Knowledge. In this video, we will be talking about switch case statements. So before talking about the switch case statement, I would like to talk about the if else if else ladder. So that is nothing but a simple implementation of the if else ladder itself. So let me give you an example. Suppose you have, uh, let me comment it down here. You have a uh, question like in the MCQ kind of thing. So you have a question and you have four options uh, like this. and you have a choice so I just say you, your choice sorry your choice and here the user can enter whatever number he wants and you can check whether his answer is correct or not so you just check whether the choice whether the choice is one or else you again go for another check you check whether the choice is two or not right and if it is not two you go and check for another set of conditions so if choice equal to three you have something to do uh, or else again you check whether his choice is four or not so if choice equal to four and if none of these are true then you say uh, that it is an invalid option so you do something like this right so this is the kind of implementation where you are not using the if else if else ladder so here you are using the if else ladder so how do i make and make it as an if else if else ladder so what is else if basically it is the same implementation just that it is using a rule that the else statement always goes with the innermost if so let me write it down here it's a very important rule so the rule is always the else statement goes with the innermost if so this is a rule you need to remember always this is always true that the else statement goes with the innermost if so if, if you write some a program like if and then you have a else for that sorry else for that and you have an if you have another if and you have an else so the hierarchy of this particular program is there is an if condition and for that you have an else condition so these three statements belong to this else condition so let me write it down neatly so if you have an if condition like this and suppose this fails the else is there right so inside this else actually so even if you write something like if if and else so what is going to happen is these three statements go with this else statement and this else if and this else are what are the actual if and else the actual contrary part that is this one so if choice equal to one or else you are going to perform any of these operations right or else you are not even going to look at them if choice equal to one you won't consider these options so here again so here if you observe there are two ifs right so this if is evaluated so this else this else always will go with the innermost if so what is the innermost if this if right so here if i have a condition one and here if i have condition two condition one is evaluated and condition two is also evaluated and only if the condition two fails so if this fails then this else is activated right so this else always goes with this particular if not the condition two one but always with the innermost if so this is a rule that is what is used while uh, using the if else if else ladder the, the thing you do is you don't actually put the braces but you just put a word like else if so that has the same meaning instead of these braces you are just minimizing it so it increases the readability so here if i put else if and here also the same thing so this if I just remove this and this else goes here and you have a final else so see I did not add any word just that the same program the same braces I just removed the braces so now the program is much more readable right so if choice equal to 1 or else if choice equal to 2 or else if choice equal to 3 or else if choice equal to 4 or else if none of these are true it's an invalid option what is the use of else if statement so now let us talk about the switch case statement so switch case statements are not always used for all kinds of comparison they are actually a kind of alternative for the 
conditional statements, but they are always not used. Switch cases are used only when we need to compare the equality of two operands. So let me write it down here, switch cases, okay, sorry. Switch cases only compare equality. So you cannot compare whether something is greater than or less than equal to or something like that. You can just compare whether they are equal to or not equal to. So the way you define switch case statement is for the same thing I'm going to do. So let us write a complete program. We'll understand like that. So let me put this here. Uh, so let us ask by asking something. So see how let's just say enter your choice for now you can add any kind of input for of your choice so just i'm just saying enter your choice and i'm going to enter uh, put my choices one down the other so i'll start with number one one and uh, again another one so let's say two and you have three and you have four and you have new line and here I'll just put enter your choice. So let me give another new line so that we can differentiate between our choice and the question. So now our choice is going to be an int. So in choice and uh, see how, sorry, see in choice. So you got our choice. Now, in the previous case, how we did that, we just uh, check whether the choice is one or two or three. You can do that actually, if, else, if, else, if, else, if, and else. So suppose there are 10 conditions, you have nine else ifs and one if, and then you have an else part where it is none of the choices. So that's how it works. In case of switch case, it becomes much more easier. So the way you do that is you just switch, sorry, the spelling was wrong, switch you put your variable in there. So what is our variable? It's choice, right? So switch choice, you have a brace and here you are just going to define your cases. So you have a case and then th this is just like comparing choice equal to some number. So I just say case one and then you need to do something. So let's just print uh, you chose one, something like that. And then the most important thing in switch case is that you need to do something called break. So we'll talk about this keyword, this break is a keyword. We'll talk about that in the next video. But for now, you just remember after every case, after performing every statement for a case, you need to break out of that case. So I generally do that without the braces, but you can even put a brace over here. So this is also correct but I generally don't use a brace. It's okay if, even if you don't. So this is the same thing we are going to do for every case. So case one, case two, case three, case four. That's all right. So we have only four choices. And then uh, let me first do that. Afterwards, we'll look at the other condition. So you have, you chose two, you chose three, you chose four. Now, let's suppose he did not choose any or not, any one of them. Now what is going to happen is, you are going to use something called the default case. So the way you do this is you put a default and then you just print um, the invalid, whatever the exception you wanted to print. So invalid choice, something like that. So that is how you use switch case. It is very easy to read and this is mostly used in case of such menu based programs. So you have menus or you want to choose something or something like that. So generally we use switch cases because they are much easier to implement than the if else. So you need to write if else again and again and again. So this one is much more easier than writing the if else if else ladder. So you can even compare strings, you can compare characters. So characters are nothing but integers and uh, you can compare Boolean values also. You cannot compare something relational, right? So you cannot compare whether it's some in some range or not. If you want to compare that, you need to go with the if else statement or else switch case is going to work for you. So let us quickly execute this program. So F9. So here it's asking enter your choice. Let me just put two and enter. So here it says you chose two. So let us now look 
that what will happen if I just remove this brick. So let me just remove these three bricks. Right? Now, once I try to execute it, just see what happens. Now it's again asking for my choice. Now if I enter something like, uh, let's say one, what it should print? It should print you choose one, right? It was working in a previous time. So now if I just put enter, it says you chose one, you chose two, you chose three, you chose four. Why did that happen? Because of the break statement. So now, if I don't have the break statement, what is going to happen is it is going to evaluate from this order only. It is going to from top to bottom. So now if first it checks the first case and then if this phase it goes to the second one, if this phase it goes to the third one and whenever it finds a match, it is just going to drop down just like that. So the break prevents the drop down. If you don't have a break, it's going to print everything in that order. So if I just remove this break also, and suppose I try to execute this again. So now here if I uh, put some case like uh, let's say some arbitrary number, so 3. So here, here if I press 3, now observe that there is no break, right? So it is going to go from 3, 4 and invalid choice. There, there is no break in between. So it's just going to drop down to the whole switch statement. So I just press enter, it's going to say you chose 3, you chose 4 and then invalid choice. So that is why you need to put the break statement. So that's all for the switch case and if else if else ladder. In the next video we will be discussing about the jump statements and also we will be starting loops. Till then happy coding.